So yeah, it's easy to find us. I talk to everybody. If anybody sends me a message, I get back to them. Um, and that's that's what the second chapter and this second chance and this this comeback is all about is being more personable and doing what I should have done right the first time. Welcome, metalheads. I'm the host of Heavy Metal Philosophy and writer for Metal Digest, John Barbus, and I've got a special episode for y'all this week. If you remember the band CKY, their frontman, Darren Miller, has got another band now called 96 Bitter Beings, and I sat down and talked to him not only about their new album, Synergy Restored, but he plans to take control of the CKY back catalog under the band 96 Bitter Beings. We talked about how he got his unique guitar tone, the state of rock and roll, and a bunch of other cool things. He was a very cool dude. I very much enjoyed this conversation. I've been sitting on it for a while, so I've been really excited, and I don't need to be delaying any longer. Here's Darren Miller. I'm John Barbas. Welcome to Heavy Metal Philosophy. Thank you. I love the title, by the way. (laughs) Thank you. So this is your second album, both albums fan-funded? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really cool, but actually crowdfunded crowdfunded in 2016. And, um, first one came out 2018 and was supposed to be exclusively for the people that, uh, that crowdfunded it. But of course, um, the physical copies were, but it got leaked. I was kind of hoping that everybody that had put it in invested in it would kept it to themselves, but it didn't work out that way. And then I didn't know that. So once it was leaked, you're like, well, I guess we got to, release right. it now right yeah huh. yeah i was really really hoping I, I in the back of my mind i was like you know this isn't gonna work you know hopefully it'll it'll stay private for a couple of years i was thinking like, i mean if everybody just cooperates and and just gets the physical copy and just you know keeps it for themselves it, it might you know I, I i tried to have that but it didn't work out quite that way but in the end it all worked out now that first record uh campaign it 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 kind of felt a little experimental to me. Like there were samples, like spoken word conversation uh-huh. type stuff going on. Uh-huh. D- did you feel more comfortable doing that? Think it was going to be private or well, I, I mean, in that kind of mood then? It was cool because um, I, I have a sense of humor about all this. I don't take it all too seriously. So every once in a while, you know, I like, I have a lot of inspirations and, uh, um, you know, I, I, grew up listening to Sparks and Weird Al Yankovic and stuff. So there's going to be a little bit of that that sneaks in there. But the first album is what, exactly what you said, like experimental. It's also like a, a almost like a, a, Whitler's, a Whitman sampler of uh, what of what people can expect from the band. Not limited to, but I mean, we have a cover on there. We have an instrumental on there. We have a heavy, really sick, heavy opening track. There's a ballad. There's um, a song written, a song written by um, uh, an old friend of mine who was in CKY. Um, there's just each song has a different, has something different attached to it. So it, it worked out perfectly. The the, the ten tracks that are on there, um, it just each song has a different um, categorical symbol, uh, symbolistic thing going on. If that makes sense. I don't think yeah. it did. <laughs> but did you did you feel more free thinking that it was going to be private to to do that experimental and and yeah. quirky? And yeah, it was. It was. It, yeah, I mean, we you know working with these guys that I have now, I feel a lot more um, able. I mean, it's not that I'm not. I, I I love to compromise if it turns into something that's better than it than it was going to be. And there was a lot of you know ideas from the rest of the band members which is something that i never really had before so that made it exciting as well but in terms of um being adamant about what happens in a song i i kind of got my way in that and um sometimes i didn't always do that so it made me a lot happier to be able to run with what what we were doing and and it was just both records were just so much fun to make we recorded so much material like me 50 50 songs and up possibly already oh, working wow. on the third one i was about to ask so that does that mean you have a a third album uh, you know in the works all from this same fan funded campaign well now we're signed to nuclear blast and we like and we gave the 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 new album synergy restored it's coming out november 4th we, we're doing through nuclear blast and the third album will be through nuclear as well i'm probably like three or four 
skeletal structured ideas into the third record i already have the title and everything that was one of the things i wanted to ask so you already secured the funding to record the album but now mm -hmm. you signed a nuclear blast so you didn't really need them to record the album so, so well we did because the we were we're recording both albums in 2018 and didn't sign with nuclear till 2020 so the deal was just pretty much okay you have an album ready we'll put it out oh okay i mean we're talking years in the making here and when COVID happened yeah it slowed everything everybody goes slowed down and to just sit and wait two two to three years for for things to get back on track is just maddening it was uh, literally torture in some inst instances and, and you're based in la yeah so it was ex especially you know hard for you guys to work during that time yeah but, you know having to field so many questions from fans and even my own band members you know, when is this happening? When is this happening? When is this happening? It was just like, and I'm like, well, I'm the one that was trying to get the answer for those questions the most. And those questions were being fielded to, to me, you know, everybody had just stopped working, you know, and, um, it was very difficult for everybody, mm -hmm. everybody, you know, we all, we, everybody has their own personal COVID story to tell, you know, two years of everything just stopping. It's just, especially in California where, they shut down the state much, much longer than, than anywhere else yeah. for and whatever reason. Rightly or wrongly, much harder too. Much harder. Yeah. Extremely difficult. Curfews, not being able to go anywhere. Um, so many businesses were shut down. The whole thing just seems really, really shady. You know, everybody has their own um, theory, conspiracy theory about why that all went down. But in California, it was it was ridiculous to not be able to do anything go anywhere much longer than the rest of the country and the rest of the world and for the entertainment industry it's the worst yeah, yeah. no yeah for yeah for music and movies you know movies were put on hold you know i was waiting for the halloween sequels to come out and they were delayed and that was a bummer cuz <laughs> movies are movies that i want to see are like one of the few things i get to look forward to these days because it's so hard to entertain myself but yeah i mean yeah i mean everybody at the record plants just pressing vinyl everybody was getting COVID, and they had to shut down the vinyl and then that caused this huge queue of bands and labels that wanted to get their vinyl out there was nobody to print them so um we got lucky and our record only took three months to print and it was supposed to come out March of next year on vinyl, and it's actually coming out on the same day as the CD. So that's, oh, that's really, nice. really good news. Really good news. Yeah. yeah it, it really hurt me that music was considered non-essential. That... Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we're in a lucky, you know, I metalheads and people that are into rock, I mean, we're metalheads, and people don't understand how therapeutic the music is. They, when they put it on, they hear noise depending on how much you love it and are into it, it's, it's, it's like laughter. I, I truly believe laughter is the best medicine. If you are physically sick and you can laugh, I think that there's, you can cure yourself. Music is so therapeutic. You know, I was talking about, well, I've started talking about recently in the seventies, they used to have scream therapy where they would get a bunch of depressed, anxious people in a room and they would all scream at each other. And, you know, and, and it's like, well, that's what metal is. Yeah. You know, it, it, I get to get up on stage and scream and it takes a lot of stress away, you know, and being as we are all, cre you know, we're creative people. So we we probably get the the, the, the biggest dose of anxiety and, and and depression and unfulfillment and, un, you know, just lack of confidence. Sometimes these things hit us, writer's block, all that stuff. And it gets frustrating. But, you know, what we work on is actually the cure for what ails us. And that's like metal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, rock and metal. Well, I don't want to spend too much time focusing on the negative. We're, hopefully we're on the other end of that. So you've got your new album coming out, Synergy Restored. And I noticed as I was listening to it that none of the, the songs are named Synergy Restored. So I was wondering about that album title. Is that like a statement Is for what it's you're doing with this album? It's a statement. It's pretty much um, instead of, it's it, you know, loosely translated i'd say it's it's we're back you know i'm back 
you know, our synergy has been restored. I've never done an album track, I think, or an album title track. I think doing an album title track puts too much stress and importance on the on that track, and it might not necessarily be the best song. So, I'm not into it. I don't think I've ever named. I I don't think I've never named a song an album title, and I don't think I ever will. The the guitar. Your guitar on every record you're on, it, it sounds, the tone sounds very uniquely you. Mm -hmm. And that's here on this record. It's it's equalized in a way that, that sounds very uniquely you. Now, every guitar player, you know, that's, that's like the holy grail to get that distinctive guitar tone. Yeah. Yeah, to be able to rec be recognized as soon as they hear you. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's, it's, people are very, you know, if you have that, you're very lucky. And and you've had it for so long. So was this like a, a process that, that you went through for a long time before y'all hit it big in CKY or, you know, did you find it there? And then what it was just natural. It was just, it was a, a slow progression. And it was, it started out with a guitar that I wanted when I was, you know, living with my girlfriend in the, in the shittiest part of Westchester, Pennsylvania. There was a music street up the or a music store up the street. I saved up nine hundred eighty eight dollars to go buy a Parker guitar because I liked the shape of it. Didn't even try it. Didn't even oh, plug yeah, it. I remember those. It. I saw yeah. I saw those in Guitar World magazine all the time. I was like, oh, those look cool. Yeah, and um, yeah, I played those for years. And then like I realized that like when I plugged into an amp, there were certain things about playing guitar riffs because I was really influenced by by riffs that are single notes. I didn't really like using chords too much. Because power chords, there's only so many things you can do with power chords to where you start to sound, from, something starts to sound familiar with them. So most of my songs are just single notes, kind of like uh, classical music in a sense that it's, you know, one specific note and then it breaks into a bunch of different uh, harmonies and all that stuff. But so I found this pedal uh, the Boss Octave OC2, OC2 pedal, and I took it home, and it thickened up every single note. Yeah, yeah. And it just made it sound, it made one guitar sound like three, and I thought, this sounds really cool. It gives it like a bottom. It gives it a little bit of a buzz. And I didn't think, oh, my God, this is going to be my thing. You know, nobody else is doing this. But um, slowly and gradually, just by accident, I was lucky enough for people to say, you know, we can tell it's you. And a lot of people say, well, I'm going to go get that pedal so I can sound like that. But it's a combination of, of the tone and what's being played. So a lot of people are like, I have the pedal, but I don't sound, don't sound like that. And I'm like, well, you know, you have to also be able to, to, uh, it's just a really bizarre mix of things that happened because of all my influences and, and taking the best of everything that I've ever liked about music. Cause I like all kinds of music and taking what's the most powerful part of, any genre or any artist and without stealing it, just util utilizing it in, in a way where I can mix it together and create my own thing within the realm of rock and metal. And that's just what, how it happened. It was just very, really natural. And it was, it wasn't something that I thought, okay, I need to have my own sound. I wanted to have my own sound. I just didn't know what it was going to be. I think you might've answered my next question because <laughs> I was wondering, you know, I definitely can hear that it's equalized differently. Like certain frequencies are yeah. lower and higher, but I was wondering if like the tone that you found influences your phrasing, which is kind of unique, or if it's the phrasing that's really doing the tone. It's both actually. It's both. It's interesting that some, I've never been asked that, like what comes first, the tone or the idea? It's like sometimes I, I, I come up with something that I don't like, but I don't have the pedal with me. And I say, you know what? This will be badass pedal on and then sometimes i'll have the pedal on and i'll be able to come up with something because of the pedal so it works both ways you know yeah that um, it really lends it the tone really lends itself to that bouncy sort of style to the and i think people understand the thing people don't understand is that it's not just that like when i do when we record we do so many tracks of you know each each song has at least four to five guitar tracks and then we pick from what we want to use we use different tones it's not just it's not just the the oc2 it's it's synth pedals and all kinds of stuff and we we i play the tracks and do them over and over and over and we, we 
we we level them up vocal tracks i do at least eight or nine per song and we just use you know just put it in there a little bit take it out so everything is built around a lot of options that we that we create for ourselves because there's now that we have pro tools we're not committed to just using 24 tracks that we used to so i'm, I'm a recording nut you know i'll be like all right start from the beginning we'll do it again so we end up with all these tracks and we get to listen to, through to everything because we, we're not on a clock you know we have our own our own studio and recording equipment and which is a relief, a much a huge change of pace from the past because we were always on somebody else's dime. But you know, this time, we, and now we're just working with our own our own equipment and our own. You know, we have our, we have more than enough time as much as we want. So we get I just pile on and pile on and pile on, and it gets to be excessive, possibly, probably I would say, uh, and obsessive. It's obsession, but um, yeah, we just use the best of what as long as we keep uh grounded to where we want the the songs to go then we're not making a mess because we get to go back yeah. and let's bring that down okay we did too much there okay so i think we perfected that on this on this new record that makes sense because i was wondering when you said that you got all the time in the world you've got unlimited tracks you, you know budget's not really a, a thing so you know as artists you kind of want to just keep making it better keep making it better keep making it right. better and you know one of the pros that that sucks in the moment of being on a budget and having time constraints is you you know you can't overanalyze it you have like a it has to be done now right. and that's why you know for me personally i look back on on past the, the quality of past recordings and i think god we should have done this god we should have mixed it this way god we should have and it, it it's hard for me to even listen to that stuff because of what we could have done and didn't because either we ran out of time or, you know, we didn't, we weren't ready or weren't prepared or whatever. So that's why I'm actually in the middle I'm near the end of re-recording every song I've ever done Wow! In, in the new way, in a new environment and being able to take the time that each song should have, or should have ha had and adding to it things that, were either not good or taking out things that weren't good, adding things that should have been in there, uh, just trying to make them sound exactly the same so that, cause I want to bring the catalog back to me. I want to have my own version of the catalog. So at the same time, we're re-recording everything, trying to get it identical to what it was, but also adding and taking things out so that in the end, it's to the point where you'll be able to hear some of these re-recordings and say, Oh, this has been remixed instead of re-recorded. So that's the goal. I wanna, I want these re-recordings that we're doing to sound remixed instead of re-recorded. And what's the release plan for that? Are you gonna re release each album again, or maybe like a big deluxe? Here's a, the deluxe greatest hits remaster yeah. of all the songs. That's that's a, that's awesome that you said that because we're on the cusp of trying to figure that out right now. Because I, I said so. Should we should we do an album of re-recordings or remixes? with the next record and they're like no 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 no. let's just put stuff out you know so over time and i think we have so much stuff to put out that as soon as something comes out and everybody's had time to be with it here comes this then they deal with that here comes this here comes this so we have so much material to just spread out over over time and that's what's really satisfying because i love to look forward to stuff you know i love to look forward like november until november 4th i'm going to be just totally excited about about um how people are going to take to this record and how positive the reception of the singles has been and um it, it's just it's just amazing and then after the album comes out we do a little more touring we'll be able to re-release you know re-release the remixes re-recordings of all the old songs and um work on a new record, maybe put out a, some covers. Um, a new thing that we like to do is we like to pick songs from our fans that they submit and we record their songs. So there's just so many different things that we like to do that um, kind of get us out of the the boredom and the the, the old hat ho-hum shit of, of what every band does is record tour, record tour, record tour. You know, I, I've done that in the past for for decades, and it's just I've always wanted to take it to a next level and be more than than a band, you know. 
So, so to clarify, you're taking fans' songs that they suggest or that they wrote? That they wrote and That's suggest. Really we've cool. done we've done both. We've done both. We've done covers. I've we've done about fifteen covers of songs, most of which I've never heard before. And um, one of them, I can't remember. I just did a cover of a. Uh, a squeeze song that's on um on an album i can't remember his name right now but let's just say i've been doing a lot of covers and there, we did a, a song by workshop uh what else is there that i have i'd never heard the song before and we did that uh somebody sent me a song they had written a fan had sent me a song and said please can you make this sound good and and um that song's called the alchemy that we did for somebody and they were thrilled just having a relationship with the fans which is genuine and not forced is it is one of the best things about being me and being in this band is that the attitude has changed you know these are, these are things i never would have done back that's, in the day that's one of the coolest things i've ever heard now Thanks. i could see it running into problems like have you had a fan give you a song and then like they don't have the proper like ASCAP or BMI or whatever that they need to, you know, to properly be involved. If you run into that. No, not really because, you know, most of the time it's just for them. You know, they say, can you record my song and they keep it for themselves. Sometimes they share it. Sometimes they don't. And oh, so it these, doesn't... Aren't, these songs aren't being released by 96 bitter beings. You just do it for them as a favor. Right. Wow. Okay. That's super cool. As a favor because of their support, you know, of, of their support for, it's a trade-off. It's kind of like, so I would never charge somebody to talk to me or meet me, but if, you know, the band, you know, all bands need some kind of support, but it kind of makes me sick to think, oh, you know, the, there's people on these websites where you pay a certain amount of money and you can talk to them or they'll, they'll send you a message or something like that, that doesn't jive with me. I think that if somebody wants to help the band financially um, with something that they needed, and I'm talking about before when we were DIY, before we had, this is, this had all taken place before we had a, a record contract, but they still want to do it. But um, it was, you know, it was the idea that they would bring songs in. They'd say, cover this song and we would do it. I did Lionel Richie's All Night Long, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've done it. We did a lot. We did a lot of stuff. And it turned out amazing. Everybody was really happy with it. It was an innovative. I don't think anybody had ever done it before, probably. But I think it's innovative. And I think it's a, it's a, a huge factor in going forward with trying to bring hard rock and metal back into the mainstream, which it's been gone from for a long, long time. That's a great segue. Missing. Great segue to my next question. This the song uh, "Blood Rock Mania." Mm -hmm. You know the the chorus to that is "Not enough is going into blood rock." And I'm right. wondering is that is that a is that an indictment of the state of rock and roll right now? Yes, I'm so I can't believe you picked up on that. So you heard the you've heard the whole record. Yes. Okay. Cool. Because uh, all right, it's cool to talk to somebody that's heard the whole thing. Um, "Blood Rock Mania" the title I ripped off from "Steam Rock Fever." by Scorpio, <laughs> if you know that song. I don't know. But um, basically, it is. It, it, it is in a humorous way. It's, it's kind of struggling with what people find entertaining and what they could find entertaining, what they're missing out on. Because I meant it earlier when I say, like, people don't understand that how much music plays in their, their health. Yeah. And in their everyday life and their, their ability to be stable and, and relaxed, you know, and it, it's so important. It's like, it's like food. It's just, it's like the same thing. It's food for your mind and, and people write it off, but they don't have anything to, to, to make up for it. So they end up finding the stuff that's easier to find out. Like, I don't even know what music people are listening to now because I know there's really not any radio. Like, where do you find a hit single? It always ends up being something on TikTok or something that comes out that to me is just, just pretty much, it just seems to be sexually motivated and it's all about what the person's wearing. And it doesn't seem like any of the songs are any good. Like I can like pop music. I know when a good song is a good song, but I don't hear anything. 
I don't hear anything good because I have kids that play music all the time. That's new. And I'm just like, Christ, what is this? Well, there's yeah. nothing going on here. It's the same old shit. Yeah. You know, the same lyrics, you know, all the women and that, that, that do pop songs talk about how the, the man's not going to get her. And the guys talk about how sorry they are. You know, it's, just, it's crap. So I, I don't, I don't understand. So I'm like, you know, I think it's really hard. There's a lot of competition in rock and metal right now. And nobody's getting that much mainstream success except for the bands that have always been successful. And it's hard to rise. I mean, I think the 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 newest band to achieve huge success in metal and rock is Ghost, probably yes. the most recent. You know what I'm saying? So it's yep. frustrating, but there's got to be a way to get there. And um I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna dedicate my life to trying to get there. Well, I really and, or at least help make yeah. my mark. You know, really, pitch it. I, I really hope you you can because. So I, I asked this to the uh, last guy I interviewed John from Anthrax. You know, they're mm -hmm. about to his side band's about to put out a straight up rock and roll record too. Mm -hmm. And uh, another YouTuber that I really admire, his name's Nick Nocturnal. He put out a video and he was like you know, it's the best time ever for metal, which I agree yeah. it is. He said, so, you know, that means rock isn't dead because every generation has gone through that. Is rock dead or not? It never is. And it can't die. Every, every time I've always said, no, it's not dead. But this time I thought, wow, man, today it seems different because yes, it's the best time ever for metal and metal is a subgenre of rock. So therefore rock is alive. But mm. metal's kind of unique. There's that festival scene, and there's always that underground, whereas yep. all the rock clubs around me have closed. And yeah. rock, it absolutely has to have live performances. It cannot survive yes. without live performances. You know, metal, you've got your bedroom black metal guys, and then, you know, you got guys <laughs> that can just perform during the festival season, you know, but rock and roll has to have that club scene, and that club scene is hurting real bad right now. I know. And, and a lot of that has to do with pandemic. I've, a lot of clubs have closed, but we just finished a summer tour and it was cool because the audience has doubled since before, because we, we were touring right before March of 2022 or 2020 when the pandemic started. And then we went on summer tour um, right after things started to open up in July, August. So, and, and people were coming out more and i thought you know it's going to be hard because every band is deciding to go out as soon as they can and we we were no different we went out and ghost you know, was we just were, complaining about that is everybody went out at the same time yeah, yeah every band went out at the same time and you know as a as a, a if you're going to concerts you have to decide if you don't have too much disposable income you have to decide am i going to go see mastodon or am i going to go see anthrax you know yeah and um it was scary to do that, but we had so much support and I like to be involved and I have to be involved in projects where you can go up the ladder, you know, you can pr progress. And that's one of the reasons why I had to stop working with CKY or they wanted me to stop working with whatever it was is because we were up the ladder and we were up as far as we could go. And then we started to come down the ladder and that freaks me out. I like to, I like to progress and, and turn things into something more. And um, you have to maintain a professional attitude while at the same time maintaining your edge. You can't lose your edge and you can't stop working on your craft and not improve it. So I really enjoy improving on what I do, topping myself, satisfying myself, and then other people saying that's better than what you did. You know, it's just, it's important to please yourself and people that are um, following you and then gaining new people that also get it as well and that's what's really hard yeah definitely well i definitely hope you succeed man because i'm really rooting for Appreciate rock and roll that. and i i need guys like like you and you know there's this guy named aaron jones he's he's making killer rock and roll records and i just don't mm -hmm. feel like the scene is there to support you know the talent that's there right there's a lot of competition and it's really hard to um God, you know, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's really financial because, you know, there are bad bands with a lot of money that can, that can create ads and they can create bots to stream. So it makes them look like they're more successful. And it's just, there's com competition in the number of acts in the, in the, the kind of act that has a, an upper hand over you. 
And, you know, basically what we try to do is to just try to keep everything organic where we don't put money into ads and see what happens. We just completely rely on word of mouth. And then when Nuclear Blast jumped on, they started to do ads and we saw that I, I started to notice that people were like, oh, here's where you've been. You know, and that was what that was great to reconnect with so many people that were like, where the hell have you been? But all the people that were there that knew where I was are really, really important because they were able to get the word out to, to the people that are that are jumping on now. So it's really exciting time for, for us because we're in a really strange, bizarre time for, for this kind of music and music in general. It's just bizarre. I, I put a lot of time in trying to understand what the fuck is going on, but it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why these kids like this stuff. And there's a lot of <laughs> testosterone missing from music today, you know, and, and teenagers need to get that aggression out and, yes. and they can't do it with Miley Cyrus and whatever the fuck is they're being fed, you know? So there has to be a way for, for somebody or, or some kind of, you know, format to believe in it enough to push it out there and kind of make, you know, kind of put these, pop acts to the side and get out there to, to these kids that desperately need an outlet for their aggression and their frustrations. And, um, it's missing. And that's why we see so much horrible shit going on in, in schools and with bullying and shootings and all that stuff. And I, I, I'm not going to say it's all because they don't have their, their heavy metal, but it doesn't hurt. Right. You know, because yeah. most of a lot of metal and rock is about being that angry person, and 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 I I, I particularly like to write it, like stories, but I I've also written songs where, you know, if you're having this problem because I had it myself, but I had the outlets of all the underground bands, Malevolent Creation, Gore Guts, you know, all those bands, Exodus Testament you know, Metallica, Megadeth, all those bands. And they don't really have that now because those bands or are all the older. other kids to talk to about those bands who are probably exactly. going through something similar. Right. When I went to high school and I'm sure you're, you, you're the same, you, you had your friends that were into that had the long hair and they had the shirts and you had your group and you had, you know, those other people are like, what the, the hell is that? You know, and they all peaked in high school, yeah. you know, all the, <laughs> the prom Queens and the jocks and, you know, and, and it was the metalheads and, and the nerds and people that that had passion for what they love were high school was like a relief to get out of. And then you can go and pursue what you want to do. So that proves right there that it's how it's a very powerful thing. So I just think it's lacking. And I just I just want to be a part of I'm not in, in a perfect in my perfect world. I would be the one to do it and be like, OK, here we are. You know, this is what this is what we've wanted to happen. This is, we've come back and this is what synergy restored means is that hard rock and metal are back. Here we are. It, it's important, but you know, it, just to be a part of it at this time is really, really exciting for us. And yes. I, I can't wait to see where it goes, but either way, success or failure, part of being in, in a metal and a hard rock band is that if you're passionate enough, you don't give up when you're succeeding and you don't give up when you fail. So right on, man. that's how it has to work. And that's the, that's, that's the message the positive message that I want to um, get out there because I've been a very negative person in the past and I'm trying to, uh, when, the, I, when I think back to some of the things that I did when I was younger, I, I just can't believe that I would do something like that. I'm not saying I've lost my edge and I can't, I won't, I don't get myself in trouble every once in a while, but I, I'm using this opportunity as almost a second chance to to uh, get the get an aggressive message out there, not to take people's bullshit, but also to put more energy and focus and and positivity into yourself yeah. and not listen to all the people and the bullshit. Because now that we have the internet, anybody can say anything to anybody, whereas before you were limited to an asshole in your face saying you're you're gay or you're you're an asshole 
your cunt, you know, your pussy, what, whatever bullying that used to go on now it goes online and it's 10 times worse. And these kids are really frustrated and they don't have the outlet. You're not going to get the outlet through Nicki Minaj. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't work that way. You know? Well, unfortunately zoom is telling me that i've only got a few minutes left i don't have the pro edition i, I feel like i could talk <laughs> to you forever i especially me too. i especially want to talk to you maybe in the future about your solos on this record they're killer but i think that message you just gave is probably the best way to end it anyway so the solos i want to say are our guitar player most of i do a couple little licks but ken hunter is our guitar player and he's fucking sick yeah they, they are killer solos man I, I, was, I really appreciated that. It's like a celebration of rock and roll. The name of the album, Synergy Restored, out November 4th. Uh, is the best way to catch you guys on tour or supporting the record with a website or social media? We're on the obvious socials, Instagram, um, Facebook, MySpace. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh, wow. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, just 96 Bitter Beings. You just look it up. Uh, you can pre-order the album on Amazon nuclear blast store. It's all Google oriented, Google, the name 96 bitter beings, everything that you could ever want or be interested in or want to check out or maybe hate or love or whatever yeah. is going to come right up at you. So yeah. we're pre-ordering our, the album right now. And we've got like um, limited edition vinyl. That's just on my big cartel store, which is really exciting because we're almost sold out of those. And that's a good sign. So yeah, it's easy to find us. I talk to everybody anybody sends me a message, I get back to them. Um, and that's, that's what the second chapter and this second chance and this, this comeback is all about is being more personable and doing what I should have done right the first time. Hell yeah, man. Well, I will put all those links I find in the description. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining me today and good luck on the tour. I hope you come near Georgia. I'll be there. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. <laughs>